Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check the description box. We got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Psalms chapter um, 101, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Psalms chapter 101. I will sing of your love and justice, Lord. I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to help me? I will lead a life of integrity in my own home. I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I will have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my, home, in my house, and liars will not stay in my presence. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. Amen. So, what did you think of Psalms chapter 101? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations are on the chapter or um, how it's been inspiring you since we've been in Psalms lately. Or if you have a favorite verse, you can comment that as well. Or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. Maybe comment your favorite emoji. Um, and also, if you need prayer, leave that in the comments too so us as a community can pray together with you. And if you've been blessed lately, let us know so that we can rejoice with you. So when I'm reading Psalms 101, I truly love it because it reminds me of how to act in my daily life and some things that I need to keep on the forefront of my mind. Um, like in verse 2, it says, I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to help me? So I want to make sure that I'm asking God daily, you know, what can I do? Please reveal your truth to me. Please reveal any thoughts or attitudes or actions of mine that I need to remove from my life. Is there anything that I need to change or grow? How do I need to grow in my spiritual maturity? You know, these types of things we need to ask God, how can we live a more blameless life in his eyes? What are these, what are areas that we need to improve upon? It's so easy to point out the errors in other people every day. Like you can look at someone and say, oh, she shouldn't be doing that. She shouldn't be talking like that. But are you doing that to yourself daily? Are you monitoring all your thoughts and your actions and the things that you say to people and how you interact with people? Um, are you truly trying to live a life of integrity? Um, and it says in my own home. So you want to make sure that you're doing that in your house as well. It's easy to do that at church or when you're at work, but when you're at home and you're in your most comfortable state, when you're the most vulnerable, when you're just not even, you're, you're, you feel safe and comforted. Are you really paying attention to how you're thinking at home when, you know, you feel at ease and you're not on guard and you're not worried about anybody watching you because just remember God is always watching and then it says I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar and I think that this is most important as you know a lot of the things that are in the secular world um, you know on TV on you know social media and music can be vile and vulgar and it's and we've become so desensitized to it that it's easy for us to just watch and sometimes when I'm watching t um, certain TV shows I'll cover my eyes or you know I'll start I'll distract myself from it because I don't want to ingest that kind of material um, and also when I'm hanging out with my friends and you know they're scrolling on their friend on their um on their phones 
and the volume's up and I'm hearing some of the things that they're watching and I'm disgusted and I'm just like it makes me not want to associate with them as much because I don't want to have to listen to what they're listening to um, so it's really important that we monitor what we're ingesting because what we fill ourselves up with is what's going to end up coming out of us and the more that we desensitize ourselves to it and make it and make it seem like that's fine you know that's what they do I don't have to worry about it no but if you still have to hear it if you still have to see it you know then you're still ingesting it so we just need to try to pay more attention to what we're ingesting every day and if it's good for our holy temple is, is it good for our spirit is it feeding more of our spirit than it is our flesh um so just monitor what you're watching on tv what you're you know what video games you're playing you just want to make sure that you're not um looking at anything too vile and vulgar and says i hate to um all who deal crookedly i will have nothing to do with them so there's a lot of scammers out there and you know mind you you might be able to go online and find you know a playstation 5 for a hundred bucks because somebody probably stole it or it got knocked off a truck and now they're just trying to get rid of it and you're like oh that's such a great deal but really is it really a great deal is it really worth the cost of the um what it's going to take um, from your balance in heaven um, you know is it really worth that um, so we really need to make sure that we're not dealing with people who are living um, who are living below the standards that God has set for us so we want to make sure that we're not you know buying stolen goods we're not you know it, it might be the best deal ever but we want to make sure that we're not doing that you know same with like there's a lot of free streaming apps and you know these are things that i have done in the past where you know there's an app and i can get all these movies for free and you know i'm like oh this is a great deal and it, it's it's legal in some countries it's just not legal here um so i would think that it's okay you know it's like compromising you know, trying to make justify and make excuses with the Holy Spirit, like, hey, this is fine. It's not really that serious. You know, this is nothing. But in the long run, it really is because you're taking money out of somebody else's pocket by watching it for free when you should be paying for it. Um, you're taking money out of somebody else's pocket. So that's similar to stealing. And um, it can be looked at that. So we don't want we want to have nothing to do with that kind of thing. So anything that's crooked or not, a, you know, above board, we don't want to have anything to do with. Um, says I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil so evil is a very loose term because it's based on perception most of the time some people think like this is an evil but it can be if used the wrong way so we want to make sure that we are staying away from anything evil and that's where we really need to rely on the holy spirit for discernment and pray to god we need to search the word is this something that is serving god is this honoring god as watching it and you know, there's a lot of things that are really harmless um and the only way that they're really serving god is that they're you know bringing joy to our lives and that's fine you know it doesn't have to be you don't have to watch only Christian TV shows and listen to only Christian music but you just want to make sure that whatever you're ingesting is wholesome and it's you know there's not vulgar or, or evil lyrics you know you just want to really just pay attention and really listen to your spirit if you start to feel uncomfortable um, and you're trying to brush off that uncomfortable feeling then that's the first sign that's a red flag that this is something that you should not be um, ingesting so we really want to listen to our bodies and listen to our spirit and know you know what is evil and what is not it says I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors I will not endure conceit and pride um, so let's make sure that we identify the word neighbor um, so in this case it's not just talking about somebody who lives next door to you it's talking about the people that you interact with daily so maybe it's your coworkers. so maybe you, you're at work and you're in the in the kitchen or in the break room and you have a coworker and she's talking really nasty about like your boss or maybe another of another coworker. Um, and you know you just don't want to be a part of that you want to not tolerate that at all and you should put a stop to it um, if you're able to in an amicable way so you know first and foremost we want to create peace in all of our environments but you also want to know who to stay away from so if you have those friends who just 
tend to gossip a whole lot, you want to put a stop to it. No more gossiping. Gossiping does not spread love. So, you know, you really have to understand whether it's somebody who's trying to process something. So maybe they're just trying to work through a situation that happened at work. Um, and then you want to offer godly advice um, in that situation. But we definitely don't want to tol tolerate people who are slandering others, who are talking negatively about others, people who are always putting people down. You know, those type of people you don't want to tolerate, you don't want to stay away from. You also want to stay away from people who are very prideful or conceited. Um, and, you know, I'm going to, I have a, I, I have pride issues. You know, I get very defensive in certain situations and it's something that God has really been working with me on. And I'm just so grateful for the transformation that he's making in my life where in regards to my pride and having more humility. Um, you know, I've been bullied a lot and I've always felt like I had to stand up for myself and fight um, just to be heard. And, um, you know, I think it's just had an effect on me in my life instead of just um, realizing that the only approval that I really need comes from God and just l learning to humble myself in situations. And even if I know that I'm right, I don't have to say it. I don't have to say I'm right about this. <laughs> I can just let people have their way. And it's okay as long as it creates peace. Like as long as it's not detrimental to them, it's not hurting them. You know, you really have to ask yourself, how does this honor God in this situation? Is it really that big of a deal? Um, you know, you have to ask him, how can I bring this to their people? attention without sounding prideful and without being defensive um, so a lot of it was just learning to pause and, and check my pride at the door and then continue with the conversation so it's something that we definitely have to pay attention to and not endure in our own lives or in other people. So we definitely want to stay away from that. And it says, I will search for faithful people to be my companions. So again, this is an application process. When you are accepting people into your lives, people can be amazing people. But if they're not faithful people, then you don't want them too close to you because, um, you know, it's one thing if you have people that you're trying to lead towards God. But it's another if you have people who are just wicked in their ways, then you want to love them with a long handed spoon. So the people that you keep as your close companions, you want to make sure that they are also filling you up with God's goodness. You want to make sure that they are, you know, spending time in their word every day, that they have the same morals and values that you do when it comes to their relationship with God. And it says, only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my home. Um, so you want to make sure that whatever people are serving you, it's godly. Um, and I'm not necessarily talking about like the waiter at the restaurant. Like she looks kind of wicked. She has too many piercings. She has too many tattoos. I don't think she's godly. No, we're not judgmental people. Um, you know, in those types of situations, we are just praying God's peace and praying for God's protection in all of our lives. But as far as the people who, when I say we say serve you, so the people who you are allowing to interact with every day, that you're interacting with every day, and you are conversating with and spending time with, you want to make sure that um, they're not deceivers and they're not people who are trying to lead you astray and take you off of the path. You know, um, I was always um, hoping for the best and wanting to see the best in people. And there's nothing wrong with that. But then it comes to a point where you start to excuse people's bad behavior because you don't want them to not be a part of your life. And that's when you need to really um, rethink your relationships and say, you know, am I excusing their bad behavior because I'm afraid to lose them? Um, because in as part of um, your life with God, you're going to lose a lot of people and a lot of things that were part of your old life. But you're now you're putting on your new nature and you have to really embrace that. And sometimes it takes staying away from people who are liars, who are deceivers, um, people who take you out of the peace of God, take people who remove you from God's presence. You want to make sure that you are staying away from those types of people. It says, my daily task will be to um, fret out the wicked and free the city of the Lord from their grip. So we definitely just want to make sure that we are um, filtering out the wicked things from our lives on a daily basis, that we are every day we are trying to grow spiritually and increase and grow our relationship with God.
So that is my interpretation of Psalms chapter 101. I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it. Leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you stay blessed, stay in God's presence and have a great rest of your day. I love you.